when people do matter in international affairs, then you ask the second question. I was, I was, when I was preparing my mind, uh, riding the bus from New Jersey, by the way, about buses, uh, I can't I can stop at saying this to you. Uh, Global Compact Meeting 2008, in my table was seated the CEO of Pfizer, the CEO of Coca-Cola, the second table was President Bill Clinton. That was the Global Compact as a cross, and Kofi Annan and uh, S.G. Ban Ki-moon was there. And so I was, so we were talking about how corporations might imbibe, incorporate, and exhibit in their corporate life sustainability. One that matters not only to the bottom line of, of corporate profits, but of, of people's, uh, in people's lives. I was so enthusiastic that I was able to share my thoughts right to two pharmaceutical CF, one pharmaceutical CEO and Coca-Cola. The Coca-Cola CEO said, by the way, my wife is a Filipino. I didn't want to go there. I was fast <laughs> rather than about the Filipino wife. I went home that night and told the thing to my wife. And my wife is my worst critic and my best friend. And she said, I bet you of those who attended, you are the only one who took the subway and took the bus coming home. <laughs> the world, the multilateral process has been, it's, it's an editorial comment, if you will, from me, that the, the multilateral process has been so deep people so that the nation state has become the primary imagination. That, that, that is not too much of our fault but one that should be in our lookout precisely because uh, that the, the, the world of multilateralism is a product of, 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 of it's a Westphalian legacy of modern states, one that put in a higher pedestal nation states more than peoples. So it behooves us to capture back the we the peoples in the United Nations. So if I, if I compose a panel here, it's because it's a, it, it is a combination of people who do not necessarily engage the United Nations. So we've got Norma and, and Connie from the Philippines who do not necessarily engage the United Nations, but I said, please speak to the issue, which is the theme of uh, the Commission for Social Development. And I've got uh, Dr. Mande Uyambo, former president of the Kamina University in the, the, the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And then we've got uh, Ms. Jun Kim, uh, I'll give them full introductions later. Jun Kim is a, a Korean-American uh, and all works here in New York. And many of you may uh, uh, recognize uh, this wonderful woman to my left, uh, Marta Benavides, who is one of the co-chairs of the Global Call to Action Against Poverty. Marta and I have uh, taught at graduate levels together uh, in some previous decades, uh, so we know each other quite well. Uh, on my right is Jeffrey Boyan Knight from Liberia uh, with some intervention with the Office of the Minister of Foreign Affairs a little over a week ago. Uh, Jeffrey was able to insert himself in the high-level meeting with uh, the, uh, of, of the Secretary General's high-level panel uh, on the post-2015. Uh, and so uh, with some uh, degrees of accreditation, I think he was able to get through security, uh, whatever. <laughs> so Jeffrey, and then uh, we've got here uh, Dr. Christina Patterson, a scientist uh, uh, who decided to go to uh, and uh, practice her craft and, and, uh, and her passion in the uh, devastated areas of New Orleans. And of course we've got, uh, we've got uh, Dr. Chantaline uh, Carpentier uh, from Canada, who is uh, an hour who is from the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs, particularly with respect to major groups that are dealing with uh, develop, social development, sustainable development. We'll get that introduction later. Well, that man on the far right uh, may need no introduction, but since I have 30 of my participants from around the world who may not know him, uh, Jeffrey, of course, is uh, very much key to the, to the presencing of NGOs in the post 2015 process uh, uh, by way of his uh, representation of Civicus 
uh, in the uh, uh, in this NGO community, and, and so uh, their presence is very much needed. Just just three points to start off, and you will have noted in the introduction that it is a moderated conversation. I do not have any pretensions to being Mr. Stephanopoulos or something like that, but. Uh, or does not presage about whatever happens tonight with President Omara's presentation. <laughs> but I will give them a three-minute time to address the, the, uh, the theme. And out of their three-minute presentation, I will go back to them and follow up on whatever they said. So the instruction to them is that their best sound bite should come in the first three minutes and then we follow up and then we include you in the conversation mm -hmm. by 4 30 reception food will arrive i hope you stay after five o'clock <laughs> soon after our event because there is uh, plenty of food to be had uh, if that is enough uh, encouragement for you to stay around <laughs> until the close of the meeting i do not guarantee the conversation but with this kind of people here i hope that the meeting will be okay my own quick soundbite. As I said earlier, the world of the UN is the world of norm and standard setting, and therefore we celebrate those different kinds of declarations. But we also lament down the line that the United Nations and the multilateral process has become more of a harvest of words than a harvest of food. You will, it's a method that we have become too good at wordsmithing, that we end meetings lamenting and not satisfied at every follow-up of the major meetings, precisely because we did not agree on the formulation of a three-letter phrase or a whole paragraph. Mm -hmm. Indeed, in Rio de Janeiro, Rio plus 20 meeting, there were many of us, and including me, there, lamenting the statement in the world we want, which says, with full participation of civil society. Now, UN, the two things in, in your imagination, the harvest of words <coughs> over harvest of food. Sustainability has to do with making for ourselves and for future generations provisions that they may no longer worry for when might those provisions be made available. And that those provisions are not endangered for future generations precisely because of our insatiable the insatiable degree with what we, which we want to generate profit and to generate comfort for the lifestyles that we have crafted for ourselves. Hmm. Which means to say that sustainability in the end has to do with the provision of the basics and the multilateral process we congratulate for having and acted norms and traditions that have given safety harbors, if you will, or safety in the, safety in the sense of declarations of human rights, for example, so that one need not beg for food anymore. No one need not beg for rights and for their dignity to be respected. But that because of human rights, those necessities of food and freedom Jobs and justice, land and liberty, <coughs> notice my use of word, a combination of the economic, social and cultural, and the civil and political, food and freedom, jobs and justice, land and liberation, if you will. So that the provision for those 
are not to be given because someone decided one day they would give it to you. But because of norm and standard setting, they are there for you to have. But for you to have is a question of access. So what good are rights when you not have access to those rights? Mm. My invitation to you is to open your mind and contribute to the conversation uh, with, with this panel and, and see how my, the whole thing of empowering for, for the eradication of poverty, but particularly raising the whole issue of unemployment and decent jobs. Right? It's a good combination, sustainability and decent jobs. And, and the, the word decent is very important in our discourse today because job that does not give you a minimum wage is job. And a job that does not give you the minimum wage is not decent job. And therefore, in the imagination of the international community, job and being able to have access to the right because of what you receive from your job if it does not provide you the food, shelter, clothing, medicine, and schooling, if your job does not provide you wage and salary to provide for you those, then it is not decent. So hopefully that uh, will coax your imagination from around the table. I, I'll call on Mark to uh, set the, uh, uh, to start the conversation. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. I am going to speak in. Spanish. 